Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Chase, and I got a special episode here for you today. I hope you're ready to meet the cast. I had some friends on the show, and we talked about our origin stories, our top three comics ever, and our least favorite comics. <laughs> Welcome to a special edition of the New Age Comics Podcast. Welcome, guys. This is the special version of the New Age Comic Podcast. So far, it's been just me pretty much on the pod so far, and I'm hoping to get my homies on the podcast more Are often. You just fucking fart. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, fart while trying to throw up the gang signs? Hell there, yeah. there you Fart-tang. go. Gang, <laughs> gang. Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> well. So, we decided to shoot something. <laughs> Why did you think that was You better not shoot that. <laughs> no, it, it was damn. Alright, continue, boss man. Well, we're gonna have some dumbass conversations, just, as, just in general, about bombics today. For, you know, the few people out there that may be listening in the future and wonder who the fuck these people are. This man farts all the time. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I feel so attacked right now. Well, this could serve as a profile, too. Like, if you were called out earlier for farting, then it wasn't I got you. framed. <laughs> I already exposed myself the first time. Double deputy. <laughs> well, let's introduce I ourselves. <laughs> All right, Sam, you're first. No, you'll go first. What? <laughs> yes. You already know me. I do that. I'm Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have dropped your name on the bottom before. Yeah. <laughs> so that's me, baby. Um, so tell the class your grade and something interesting about yourself. Mm, I'm in 11th grade. <laughs> <laughs> Going into 12th. Awesome. You just learned how to drive. How's yes, that? Sir. <laughs> Go to fucking McDonald's every day. Is that something interesting about yourself? Mm-hmm. Okay. I eat food every nice. day. Nice. That's super interesting. Ian? <laughs> My name's Ian. <laughs> I'm a dropout. Let's go. Let's go. So what grade is that? Just dropout grade. Oh, okay. <laughs> and what's what's something interesting Next about you? grade DC. Disconnected. Uh, oh, you dc from the chat. <laughs> dc from school. <laughs> Alright, well that's interesting. Go on, Sam. Hello, my name is Sam. Um, I also dropped out of college. Hell yeah. Uh, Heck yeah, brother. Not regretting a single thing about that. Hell yeah. Here we go. Um, Something interesting about me. Um, Or Marvel. I own two cars. (laughs) Marvel. (laughs) Marvel. Subtle flex on it. Option C. I have some two cars. Marvel. Up here, DC down here. Well, fuck you. For those listening, he did a pretty elaborate hand gesture. Yeah, about <laughs> about two feet in length. <laughs> For our first thing that we'll talk about, it has to be our origin stories. So, who wants to go first? You. Oh. <laughs> I, I feel like I have to go after Ian. Uh, Ian has right. to go first. Yeah, yeah, so okay, Ian. So then it would go me, Chase, Trevor, Sarn. We'll hit a counterclockwise. What's That's a, a weird fucked up <laughs> line. I'll okay. okay. oh. say it at one time. Oh, that'll right. come off super good during the <laughs> listening. Okay, you guys ready? Better than the test when we All right, so I guess I got into comics because my mom was super big into X Men when she was younger. And she got a bunch of, she had a bunch of X-Men comics. She'd collected over time and she kind of fell off of it. But one day it was bored. I just flipped through a few. After I think watching some Marvel movies, I really liked the X-Men, I kind of picked it up. Do you remember what issues? They were the X-Men Hidden Years. Oh. I actually remember reading those. And then I found the this app. I don't know if I should say the name. Yeah. It's it's I mean, a, is like copyright? No. Oh <laughs> you God. can you can provoke the name of companies. I mean that's the whole point of the cast. We're gonna lose our sponsorship. Uh, it's that Marvel Unlimited app. Hell where yeah, I brother. Can, <laughs> where you can read a bunch of comics for like a subscription. And uh, so I was reading all a bunch of different comics on there, but all X-Men, and eventually I decided I'm gonna read all of the X-Men. <laughs> From Every... 1963, <laughs> Uncanny X-Men 1, to where they are currently. And I also started buying the current series that were coming out, because they had just started with X-Men Gold and X-Men Blue. 
revitalizing the X-Men. And um, so I was keeping up with those while reading up through. And uh, I started telling these goons all about it. <laughs> and they blew me off and uh, ignored me I until... No money. <laughs> Yeah, and then you somehow found money to spend on comics. I found the passion. <laughs> well, there you go. Anyway. That's mine. Then, you know, I got into a... Well... Looked, uh, that dude over there, the yes. La Porter, into uh, checking it out. And right. uh, he went all out, balls deep. Hence, you know, I hence gave him a here. few warnings of not going that <laughs> deep, but he ignored me. I did not listen. Yes. <laughs> and, uh... I read, I got up to the 90s in the comics, right up to the Onslaught arc, and then I kind of had my own life that I had to uh, figure out, so I kind of fell off, but I started picking them up back up again, picking up where I left off in the 90s, and then catching up where I left off in the modern area too, but I'll pass it on to... <laughs> And there's the reason new comic god. There is a reason we have to pass it because my origin is directly intertwined with yours. In fact, I so I started with the movies is how it all started. I just binged the movies because I was like, damn, these connect. That's kind of neat. And one day I was hanging out with Ian and he started telling me all about X-Men comics. And I thought it sounded pretty cool. And I, I remember specifically, you pretty much broke down House of M to me. And I thought it sounded like the coolest shit ever. And then you went on to describe fucking the Messiah Complex shit. You were, you were so hyped for Messiah Dude, Complex. Dude, I was, and I've read that now, and it did not disappoint, I gotta say. <laughs> it's a good series. <laughs> it is good. And that night I watched uh, Captain America Civil War, and then I was like, hmm, Ian told me about this app, I'm gonna fucking download it and check out the comics. And it was all over from there. And here we are. Yeah. Like, I, I, that was the first thing I like ever it's read, Civil War. Now. And uh, yeah, now yeah, now it evolved so deeply that- And you read all of the times, yes. which is like 200 comics. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like 90. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, either way. Close enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I jumped in head, head first and it was a lot of fun. Your turn, Tommy. <laughs> um, so, I'm kind of the baby of the group. Uh, I started uh, le most recently out of the group reading comics. Um, and I vividly remember going to the comic book store for the first time with these guys um, while they were picking up some stuff. And Ian um, convinced me to pick up a random Moon Knight uh, comic. Um, and it was an annual comic. Unfortunately, because it had no context. Um, <laughs> He's like barely in that issue. Yeah, uh, it gave me very little info on Moon Knight himself. It kind of just, just like catch a. It just shows that he is a badass yeah. street vigilante <clears throat> that he protects people out on the streets. <clears throat> um, yeah. it, it very. All you really saw was him beat the shit out of a guy, but you didn't even see it was him until the very end when he's leaving. Mm -hmm. uh, but the guy was some sort of predator. Um, he's so, like a serial rapist or something. Yeah, something really yeah. cool. <laughs> something hella edgy. <laughs> yeah, something cool to destroy, which he did. Speaking um, of, don't mean to interrupt. Speaking of Moon Knight, I gave that comic to the wrong person. <laughs> uh, that is true. True, which that's actually the reason you read that comic or bought that comic is the reason I even got into Moon Knight. Yeah. Because you told me how confusing he was. I was and I was confused. like, well, I'm destined to figure out what the fuck this character is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then from there, um, my comic interests branched away from Moon Knight um, into other things like the Inhumans, my top favorite. Heavy. Um, Ghost Rider, Venom, close seconds there, but. Yeah. Um, kind of just following on the heels of these guys, reading what they read, talking to them about all that stuff. Um, Trevor, sweet, sweet. I guess. Well, I'm last. You're last. And my uh, my comic journey was kind of wavy. I, I started out watching all the Marvel movies and DC movies. Dark Knight's top three movie of all the time. No cap. No capping. Um, we don't cap here. And then I really got into the CW, like DC shows, Flash and Arrow, really hard. And then that got me uh, interested and knowledgeable of a grip of characters that I uh, got comics on. One of the first times that Ian dragged me to a fucking, I think it was Rainbow, the first time I bought a comic in Lincoln. 
Yeah, yeah and we were reading the uh, Infinity Countdown or whatever. Yeah. Because we were hyped about the new Infinity event. <laughs> I was getting you to read the actual Infinity Trilogy. Which I did. That was like the first thing that I re really remember about comics is you hearing, me hearing you and Devin talk about getting these certain issues like every week. <clears throat> and I had no clue because they were all fucking different. Like, this is one series, but all they're all different. Yeah. I had no clue what <laughs> events were back then. And, uh... Yeah, I guess we've been buying comics ever since, I think, since two years, like yeah. over two years that was now. like t early 2018, I think. I guess I started three years ago. Well, yeah, and yeah then you were buying it like when we were sophomores, I remember, because you, you were doing like the weekly fucking X-Men gold, blue, and red or something. I specifically remember, I think it was the Halloween party, Yeah. laying on the floor with Sam trying to sell him that Marvel Unlimited ad book to sell. <laughs> yeah. Sam was just like, I don't care. <laughs> I ain't got no money. Yeah, I was like 20. Right. 18, well, I think it was 2017. I'm pretty sure you got me into it the summer after freshman year. And so that it was probably those couple months yeah, before you, that. You were reading Civil War during training. Yep. Um, like the second year that we were living at the view. Yep, I was reading Civil War. Yeah, after that first first year in college. <laughs> yeah, I think that next, you started, I probably the next year. So I'm yeah. like six months ahead. And I, I think it's cool us telling this story because now most people that read comics are old. And so they have very different memories. That's why we got the hookup at trade. Because we're youngins. Ours, all of this can be traced back to my mother. A little bit. Original. A little bit. And and literally just a random box of comics that she kept for. Right. Because my mom was nostalgic. And I, well, I think the movies Whatever. are yes. the movies are complicit because True. they they kind of softened the ground up. Yeah. I never would have picked up those comics if I hadn't watched the movie. Right. I, exactly. I we used to sit at once together, like senior year of high school, and I was watching Flash at that time, and I was like, I think I know a lot about it. And then I'd come to you, and you'd tell me shit in the comics. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my Jesus, I had no clue there was this fucking much, and you knew so much. And that was before I even was really big into comics. Yeah, so it was you like reach it online. <laughs> I think that was just stuff I had looked up online. Yeah, crazy. It's crazy shit, man. For the next thing, I figured we could go into our like top three comic shits ever, oh, Jesus. and we could go around the room. Comic shits. Comic <laughs> shits. So I guess I'm talking. I didn't want to say just series because I mean shit. I guess you could say a one shot or say fucking a whole story or just an arc. <clears throat> it's up to you. Just top three comic shits, and we'll, we'll go around the room and we'll keep going. So you name one, and we'll go to the next, and next, and next. So come up with one for right now. If you need a second, we can. <laughs> Oh, I already know. Oh, I already know you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys, you guys ready? I got at least. I've, that's what I've been looking at. Okay, two. Okay. Pass. This is one of my favorites. And you got them? Yeah, I got my. I'm sure. I got two. I think. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Yeah. Not a lot of comics. Mm -hmm. Sam, you're ready. You go. Yeah, I was very ready. I haven't read as many comics as these guys, so it's a lot easier to narrow down. But that's dope. Um, but I think my all-time favorite comic series, or should I start with the the third option, like number three mm. instead of number one? Yeah, I like that. Well, <laughs> mine were <laughs> mine were not in a particular order. Well, mine were, right. and I was very excited to share. I'm gonna order them now. Are you, 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 you want to put have three at this point? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I started with my top two. I gotta figure out my bottom. <laughs> you guys can narrow it down. You know, yeah. Well, let let it let us go up to to one. Okay. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Starting at, at number three, um, it's definitely going to be the all-new Ghost Rider, the 2014 Ghost Rider that introduced Roberto Reyes. Banger. Um, the creative team, Felipe Smith, uh, nice. and notable Trad Moore for yep. doing uh, the uh, newest Silver Surfer Black stuff. Facts. That art is legendary. Um, and I just loved Robbie Reyes' character as a Ghost Rider. Um, it's a very young, fresh take on it. Uh, it's kind of silly, but also shows off his struggle really well, uh, being a, a teenager in a rough part of town, um, trying to help raise his little brother. I identified a lot with Robbie. Yeah. Um, and I thought his exploits with the Hell Charger were oh, just yeah. so freaking cool. I love that series. It was so short, though. It was short. Yeah. Um, and Tradmore did not do the art throughout the whole series. That was whack. Didn't he yeah. drop out, like... I think it was like four comics in. I think, but then I think he came back to do the last yeah, issue. Yeah, it was something. I think he did come back, but right. his art really just took off the series. I got hooked immediately oh, yeah. from the start. There's a scene I can see where Robbie is like 
kicking this bad guy as he's falling from like 20 stories in the air and he's oh just like God. bent in half. <laughs> um, it was the coolest <laughs> shot ever in none, the comic. None of the people it. in his drawings have bones. Yeah. <laughs> they're all just they, they're shattered. Bones, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, I just, I thought his story was really cool. Um, and I've loved Robbie <laughs> and the Avengers uh, recently. Yeah. Um, and Ace I think Aaron's Avengers. Yep. And Aaron's Avengers. I think Robbie's been really cool Chum. in that. Um, that was such a good new Ghost Rider, yeah. And then the, the him the, meeting the King of Hell, uh, uh, Johnny Blaze. Oh, um, the race of the Ghost Riders. The race of the Ghost Riders. So dope. Um, yeah, very cool. That's topping of my third. I guess, I don't know, we were doing it three, two, one, but I guess for number three, uh, spinning out a Civil War, I'm gonna have to go with Penance, the little six parter or some shit. Let's go. Out of fucking, if you don't know Civil War, uh, then get learned. <laughs> get learned. Spoil it. We could not go into all of the details. Pretty much, the dude who caused civil war at the base of it turns into a uh, death fucking <laughs> maniac who the, enjoys pain enough and deserves penance. And the edgiest character. I don't, know, I don't know who writes it off top, but I think that like, was Paul it's a Jenkins. Perfect little like five or six parter, and I have no complaints about any part of it. Let's go. It is great. Let's go. Penance right. is an edgelord. All right, I'm... All right, so I guess for my uh, number three, I'd have to go with the uh, the Generation X <clears throat> series. Um, Gen X? Yeah. When, it's when like early 90s and just probably okay. the whole beginning. I guess there's a certain point where what I never got that far, but I know it falls off. What, what is Gen X? Uh, it's kind of like... Well, the X-Men, they always introduce new teams of younger, because, you know, they grow up, so it's the next students in. And Gen X is the one after the new mutants. So, because you get the first team, mm -hmm. and then there's the second definitive team, and they're kind of add and lose people in the that, team for a while. that giant-sized team? Yeah. Yeah. With Wolverine, the, the team that made X-Men big. Right. Really. And, um... And then... You kind of add and lose people for a while, but then the first, the next new team you get is actually New Mutants, and they're the first like team that's additional, almost, because the X Men gained so much popularity that they wanted more X Men mm -hmm. novels out. So like, add a new team but keep this old one mm -hmm. instead of running in a full right. new team. Just new run. Yeah, and so they had the New Mutants, and of course the New Mutants. And they also started X Factor, that was before, but not important. Right. Um, and eventually they turned into X Force, the New Mutants, and that's when the Gen X comes into play, which is like the next youngest generation. And um, the whole beginning part, it, it puts a good new spin on something that's been done before, brings new creativity to it, and shows different struggles and different mm -hmm a whole different spin and point of view on the X-Men and mutants in general and how some mutants aren't because the idea of a mutant is that it's the next step in evolution right. but that sometimes evolution those next steps are also missteps mm. so some of these mutants on the team that they encounter are not their mutation is actually not helpful Okay. Um, but some of them make it, you know, it's about them making it work. I guess like, you could say that was true in, like, Cyclops and Beast a little bit from yeah. the OG. Well, Beasts is more complicated, and true. Cyclops and Beast both suffered injuries or their own experiments that yeah. turned them into less... It would have been more useful. Right. But uh, specifically the character I'm thinking of is... a. Uh, one of the characters I remember most is Skin, who has like <laughs> just six extra feet of skin. Ew. That is his mutation. He's kind of he's a nasty looking character. Ew. That seems but like the whole, something we would make up ourselves. He's also like 16 and always smoking, which is kind of weird. I didn't know you could do that, but <laughs> and it's gray, so he's gray as well. He's just this nasty looking character. That's disgusting. And he's also like this. Fuck who I'm mm, like Latino gangbanger <laughs> has his personality, and um, but it's kind of just him coming to grips with that his mutation is nasty and it's not really useful. And they also do you learn about uh you meet the first um, 
mentally handicapped character who is uh, in there. And uh, well, that? actually, once it becomes revealed is when I hear that I never got this far, but I hear that it gets really, really weird. Oh, okay. And kind of falls off. But up until then, it gets um, it's pretty good at just taking a whole new spin. Okay. On the struggles and stuff that mutants deal with. We're talking about Gen X still? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but it's kind of a long right. series. Do you know how long? Yours were shorter, I feel. Do you know how long it runs? Not that bad. Okay. Because it's not all on... The yeah, album. I don't, I don't okay. have all the comics for it. Could you ballpark it? <sighs> Maybe like 90 to 100. Dang, okay. Oh, damn. Which, well, I like long runs. Those are big old You're used to that with, with yeah. Uncanny. I mean, like, <laughs> Uncanny is like a 600 before the first break. Yep. <laughs> and there's like another 200 after that, really. Yeah. <laughs> Plus all the other series that I have to keep up with. Dude, I wonder if they're going to, just like DC did the uh, Superman and Batman, I wonder if we're going to see like Uncanny X-Men 1000. No, because they cut off at... It's either 500-something or 600-something. Right, but they do those legacy numbers, you know, where they count up. Because Batman and Superman, Action Comics True. and Detective Comics, have cut up. Also, for a while, um, if you want to get into technical, like, false legacy, then there was, for a long time, Uncanny X-Men and then a co uh, series running next to it that was just titled X-Men. Right. So, but separate team. That would be dope to see an Uncanny 1000. I would love that. I would get it. <laughs> you see, you'd finally come back to the store. I'd buy that one gun. Okay. Well, thank the Lord. We know what will bring him your back. Your turn for number three. <laughs> um, I was trying to think. I think my number three, and I, I really was advocating for In No Order because I have too many favorites to count at this <clears> point. <throat> like, it's impossible for me to have a top three. It's almost one of those, like, depending on the day type things. Mm -hmm. But I will give a number three to the 2015 Ninjak series, and for a couple reasons. Oh, my. I really like this run, because it's, it's an amazing run. It's James Bond, Batman, <laughs> Ninja, essentially, is how uh, I would describe I you it. you were literally saying that they're all on one team. I mean, yeah, I would buy that, and it would probably take Ninjak spot in my list <laughs> like, just all from, just <laughs> priority you know? exactly no but I think I, I have to give it to this series because this series really made me realize like how awesome third party comics could be and that has been something that I've just fallen head over heels for a little Valiant yes and I, I love Valiant comics like I'm, I'm currently getting into them at the moment but it's all because of that Ninjak series Shout out. Yeah, big shout out. And it's just a great series. Like, I, Trevor, I gave you, like, the first arc in singles. You need to. <laughs> you need to read some shit, too. Sure, I'll read your penance when All I get right. around to there. <laughs> I, I promise to do that. And so, yeah, for a lot of good reasons, that is my number three. Back to Sorn. Um, so, pretty easy pick uh, for number two for me. Uh, a run that I still believe is going on is the 2019 Donny Cates. Oh, yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of the artist. Stegman? Ryan Stegman. Ryan Stegman, Ryan Stegman yes. Stegy. He's flipped um, out a couple times. Has he? Okay, yeah. well, that, that creative team is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, that Venom run, I've on, the only other Venom I've really read is the 2011 Venom. Um, I can't think of the name of the uh, writer. I think that's Remender. Yes, Who Remender. Um, yeah. And I thought it was a really awesome take on Venom so far. I believe that run is still going. I haven't kept up yeah. with it. Yeah. But I think it just hit 27. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Plans um, for a long-ass run. I, yeah, I believe it. Uh, I, in my eyes, it's been very successful. Oh, um, hell yeah. Super good. The art has been just phenomenal. Um, really has. Watch. Taking Venom's mental health or... Uh, Eddie's mental health, along with his symbiote, um, very seriously, mm -hmm. really sweet uh, mental health awareness stuff going on in there, um, along with how they're kind of engaging in symbiosis and kind of mm -hmm. like how they need each other, mm -hmm. how they both need each other, and kind of how yeah. Eddie's been struggling with the thought of maybe it's a parasite or maybe it does care about me and something right. like that. And it's even dived back into the great lore of the symbiote yeah. itself. Back Hello to, retcons. Yes. Yeah, a lot of crazy <laughs> stuff. Um, Noel shows up. 
Um, we don't want to yeah. be a spoiler, but no, read the ahead. comic to figure out who I, all I am spoiler alert all over my weekly episodes, as yeah, you so, know. So go for it. I don't um, care. It's just, it's a lot. There's like new lore popping up. Like he's making stuff for the character that is really yeah. nice to read, really fresh. Right. Um, really exciting moments where you really don't know what's going to happen next. Bringing uh, Miles, Spider Man into it, just newer characters, yeah. really uh, livening up the situation. Bringing background to Eddie himself with family. I'm not mm -hmm. going to exactly no, yeah. point out what's going on. Well, but he, he made his son. Yes, that's his like son. a new character. Yes, his uh, Eddie has a son. It talks about his dad. Yeah, um, stuff about his past, um, and it, it just really takes Venom to a high point. Uh, well, yeah, like it, Kate's. He did such a good job basically breaking Venom away from the Spider-Man connection. Yeah. Like, it, in the past, it had to be Spider-Man adjacent. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's Venom. His origin is explicitly linked. Yeah. But Kate's, he did so much to it, even to where he almost retconned his, the symbol, remember? Yeah. Of the spider in mm -hmm. the Venom suit. He had to twist it to be a dragon. Yeah. And that was the retcon there. <laughs> but, I mean, he did it. So now, now it's not like, oh, Venom can only have existed when it comes to Spider-Man. It's like, no, yeah. McClintar yeah. have been around forever. Yeah, he has his own space uh, to be explored in, and I think Cates is really, mm -hmm. really taking full advantage of that. That's why I like yeah. that series so much. I, and Chase and Trevor both read that with me. I don't know if you want to weigh in at all, Trevor, how you feel about it, but time out, time. it's a great yeah. series. We're still That's reading it. No, no arcs have fucking yeah. peaked, not peaked my interest at all. Donnie That's Cates true. gets a special shout-out, I think. Just yeah. he's right. a fan it's a 10 favorite. Out of 10. Yeah, right. fan favorite. Pretty much every Kate's book will be featured on this podcast, so <laughs> be ready. Um, Super amazing writer. Well, and I love Stegman's art. I've listened to Kate's talk about Venom, and you back to what you were saying with the way he has interpreted the relationship between Eddie and the symbiote. He explicitly thinks that it's a great metaphor for addiction. Is how he was approaching the run before mm -hmm. he was writing it. That he thought this the symbiotic relationship explicitly resembled addiction. I can absolutely see that, and especially right. the way Eddie almost goes through withdrawals after separation. Absolutely, um, you can definitely see that. Um, I think Kate's really writes from deep personal experiences, and I think he nails it every time when he tries to bring that emotion to the comics. Yeah, for sure. Um, super great writer. I'll pass the ball, Trevor. All right, hack. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess going off of like no particular order, this my second pick would probably have to be uh, White Knight. Okay. Tom Murphy's first. The OG the White OG Knight. The OG White Knight. Yeah. It's just a fucking an absolute banger. See, and anyone listening can know we're young off of you saying that. Yeah, y'all y'all fuckheads who think it's bad and annoying, you can fuck yourself. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> that, that's all I gotta say. Like, yeah. Wait, so describe to me what the fuck? If all y'all annoying ass golden age heads who think yep. this is stupid, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you times ten. Wait, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. to give a little context. No context needed. <laughs> fuck you again. I would like some context, please. <laughs> Basically, me and Trevor we're in the shop one day and we, the, the dude made a sequel to this run and me and Trevor were hype about it of course being like oh yeah why not it's and a one man creative team right it is yes, he writes and I draws guess, it other, which than, is dope. other than the fucking colorists and whatever but yeah, I don't count yeah Matt Hollingsworth does oh, colors they're, they're like a creative the colors team, are noted literally everything he does is Matt and this yeah well and me and Trevor were hype about White Knight issues, and these guys were talking mad shit on it. A bunch of older guys. Old fucks. Like, super we much thought, older guys. We thought Doomsday Clock was like a stupid run. Which, mm. we're getting into some controversial shit there. Mm. <laughs> but that, that's something about this podcast is it's young guys. It's controversy. New age. Yeah, new age comics. You stepping on our blood? You stepping on our opinion, son. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go again. That is the, the description. The Wait, describe the White Knight series, though. Okay, I have no yeah. clue what it's about. Okay, so White Knight is. <laughs> That's what I was asking. <laughs> Joker pretty much cures him. I guess unforcibly. Well, I think you've mentioned. Yeah, that. Batman literally forces a bunch of drugs in his mouth, saying that if like apparently these drugs will cure Joker, and he almost like fucking drowned him in pills, and then he was like cured, so he turned into Jack Napier. Who exposed Batman and all like the uh, elites of like corruption and pretty much took down Batman and yeah. like stole his company or was trying to? I yeah. think the the gist is like, what if the Joker was sane? And then his like plan like made sense. Like Batman has done like fucking a lot of damage to yep. Gotham, and so he was just like saucing on him the whole time with yeah. facts. 
and then he sacrificed himself to turn back into Joker to save the day. Yep, in, in typical superhero fashion. Won't say how, I've got to read that shit for yourself. <laughs> Trevor, maybe me and you can reread it and come back on. Book club! And do, yeah, do a book club. All right, so quick clarification. Is this personal favorite series yeah. is or just... Caught him. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> or just like best series is in general. Personal like, favorite, yeah. Personal yeah, all right. Fuck, fuck that then, best series objective. That's your personal opinion on that. Then I'll go with what I think is a good series just objectively. Okay. It's not my personal favorite, but it might be objectively a better series, is uh, Secret Wars, the original. Because mm. it's just... Oh, yeah. I, I, I think all of you... You got me to read that. that. You got uh, me to read that. I think I'm pretty sure I got all of you to read I'm that. surprised that there's, there's nothing we have all read. Got him, GG. Oh my god. <laughs> it's it was nothing. And, um, but Secret Wars. It's just That's it's a classic. Such a well laid out event. Mm. It's really it's a good beginner event, which I think yeah. is why I recommended it. First thing to all you guys, because there's not a ton of tie-ins. There's not a ton of prequels either. I don't think there's any, right? The there's a couple of prequels. There oh, might yeah. be like one. One time. That dialogue Deadpool that's Secret so... Secret War? That's its own thing. Which is pretty funny. I would recommend reading it if you've read Secret War. That's the only time we'll talk about Deadpool on this podcast. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was funny. Um, but I'll spoil it right now. Is that The whole thing is that he's there the whole time, but someone's wish is that he never was. So he only, he's the only one that knows he was there. Yeah. Um, but... Uh... Uh, and it's just, it's a very well laid out series. It's so easy to get into and read through. There's, especially with, and it's one of the older E. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Don't be got it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you but, uh, shoot Trevor in the bah, studio. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that was very clipped. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, he. Speak, you buffoon? <laughs> Quit interrupting me, you buffoon! <laughs> um, but as a... <laughs> Trevor, is there something you, you want to say? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, say something. You want to say something? No, it's so funny. Um, okay. It's just very... I feel like as an older... One of the first... I don't know if it's one of the first. But as an older event... There was a lot less complications and retcons and all this stuff going on in comics. Mm -hmm. That it's yeah, that's just annoying. They were yeah. a lot simpler in the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> so it's it's easier to make a simpler series, and it's not like something that's been lost over time. Yeah, that's all. And as an event, I feel like it was just laid out perfectly. Yeah, and this perfect understanding. Like, it was a, and also it was a good story. Yeah, too. It brought in all these different teams and characters and brought them all together it's how venom event. it's how venom got introduced yeah. true oh, yeah. that is venom's like origin yeah. pretty much in pretty there cool story it's uh it also brings going to x-men a little oh we got uh him. it also brings a new light to magneto as mm. that he's not really as villainous as everyone makes him out to be he's not yeah. as simple because because like, he why was the deemed fuck a here? good guy yeah he was deemed a hero at the time it's and everyone kind of was like, why is why is he over on our side? Mm -hmm. It's all and, perspective. Yeah. And it's sure. all like, well, what he's fighting for is no different than what the X-Men are fighting for. Or really what the humans are fighting for. He just has different means of going about it. Yep. And he fucks the shit out of the wasp. Yep. Yeah. He brains out. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Actually, I don't think he does get it past the first base. He, he smashes. smashes. He smashes. They imply it. Who? They imply that they're gonna. I think. Don't they, don't they wake up together? No, I think she bounces. I think she knocks no. him out. And then she bounces or something like that. Damn. Oh, it's been a while since I've read the series. But that's what I'm saying. There's so many like legendary moments in that event. Like, oh yeah. Like the Magneto. And Doom wasp. always running yeah. up and just fucking everything up. Doom fucking shit up. Venom. And then isn't there that that famous Hulk scene? The cover where he's oh, holding, he's up? holding a mountain. Yeah, that's like my favorite moment. Because a mountain dropped on him, and he just catches it. Because <laughs> he's the Hulk. It was gonna crush the all the Avengers. Right. Yeah. That's like dope shit. Them. And that's kind of isn't that one of the first times that the Avengers and the X-Men kind of cross over. Yeah, yeah. That was also 
low-key embarrassed for the X-Men, where Spider-Man single-handedly beat them all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just kind of made them all look like fools. Yeah. Like fool. Like until fool. Xavier <laughs> slid up and just... They were out, lights out. They wanted to big up Spider-Man in that scene. Yeah. But. Spider-Man was gaming, I think. He was very popular. For though. sure. Well, and that's like the all-father of events. Like, that was the first crossover event, pretty much. Way to go. I, I did like And it was achieved yeah. perfectly. And that's why I might say it's a better series overall. Because mm-hmm. personal favorite, it is not my personal. What's it's a close second. Favorite. It was, what's your personal? It's your turn. Uh-huh. All right. Just Dodge the question. We'll have to talk about this later. <laughs> You'll get to me. <laughs> um, for my second series, I have to say the 2012 Hawkeye series. Y'all have all heard me rant and rave about this plenty, I'm sure. But this series really showed me, like, the... I guess the love I can have for just one character, because it really just made me fall head over heels for Hawkeye. And I have to give it this credit as my second favorite, because that's what got me into, like, continuity reading. Because I was like, oh, shit, there's all this shit that happened with Hawkeye. He's been around for, like, 60 years. And so I went and read his origin story in an Iron Man issue and then learned about how he was, like, Goliath at one point in, like, the 70s and then Ronan, obviously. And that shit made me fall in love with just, like, connected universes in general and continuity, which you all know that I am a hoe when it comes to continuity. Big time. That's expensive. (laughs) (laughs) That's what we call it. That's expensive. (laughs) Yeah, well, it is. It's definitely been the reason I have six long boxes at home. Flex. 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 (laughs) How many long boxes again? Uh, Maybe you missed her. And how much more of a peasant are we compared to you? Dude, on a personal note, Hannah at the desk the other day, co-worker, she asked me how many comics I had. So you don't want to know, bro. Did you flex on her heart or did you... I guess I gave her a ballpark. I don't even know. I think I'm over a thousand. I I said like three. What was that? Because I counted up once back when I had like two or three long boxes. And how many words is that? I think it was like 1500 or something like that. Man, it's fucking shit. Yeah. And so I think I'm like 3000 plus. And then I have all those comics on my desk that I haven't read. That's another 3,000. Right I mean, there. there's probably there's <laughs> probably like 500 right on the desk. <laughs> so, but off track a little. Loved Hawkeye 2012. I'm still trying to get you guys to read it, but no one will because y'all nah. hate me. No. <laughs> well, I like that you're straightforward with it. <laughs> yeah, nah, I'm not reading it. <laughs> Is that the series that has a lucky... Um, his origin in it? Yeah, well, mm-hmm. it has like a comic that's like all from his perspective. Yes. One of the coolest comics yes. ever seen. It won an Eisner. So it, there that, you go. That issue. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Eisner winning comic. It is. It's all from the perspective of a dog, super great He dog. like solves a crime. It, it is the, <laughs> the writing, it's all from a dog, but you can still almost read it. Like yeah. it's almost like the way that they draw it. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, it was so cool. Well, and I, my favorite part about that issue specifically is how it, when he, when he's witnessing people talk, he catches like a couple words, yeah. like how your dog knows what sit means. Yeah. Like and so it would be like Clint, walk, sit, <laughs> food. Like, but then it'd be all scribbled out in between. Uh-huh. And then later in the series, they they give that same issue, but like what was actually happening. Oh, cool. Yeah, like I didn't know Clint that. and That's Kate. awesome. Right, because okay, cool. I think I just showed you the dog yeah. issue. That was really cool to me. I thought yeah. that was awesome standout. Actually, right. from that series. Oh, it's amazing. And so, yeah, gotta give it to Hawkeye. Uh, we can throw it back to you, Sam. Last All right. one. Easy. Yeah, top Easy, one. all-time favorite comic. One of the first series that I fell head over heels in love with that really started me out was the uh, Saladin Ahmed 2017 uh, Black Bolt run. Yeah. Oh, That's nut. what got me sucked into the uh, Inhumans in general. Nut. I, Black Bolt is to this day my favorite character. He's like the most comics. OP character. He is, but this <laughs> series does a good job of uh, bringing his power down a level and it giving does. him some more. He gets nerfed. Yeah, he Straight just up. he's more relatable and to the point where like he loses his power in a certain part when they're in this mm-hmm. special space prison. Yeah, he goes to fucking jail. Yeah, being too ill. Yeah, it's some trickster, <laughs> trickery from his brother Maximus, which is always, always on. Is. Yep, the always Loki of the Inhumans. <laughs> um, and he makes a really cool friend with uh, Crusher Creel in this prison, and they the have absorbing man. Yes, yes, the absorbing man. He he is like that. 
very Not random character to come up. Right. right. Super great he bonding time old between them. Yeah. Is yeah. I think super he, he's an old. It's surprising how old he is. Yeah. I always forget that like, yeah. he's been around. He's an OG. It sounds like a weird cast, right? Just to say it out. But no, like, no, it is. Yeah. I, well, I think if if there were to be like Oscar nominations for comics, yeah. Creel would win best side character or like yeah. best supporting actor. I think because so. that's how he plays in that series. He, you get a little bit of him, but you're still focused on Black Bolt <laughs> the whole time. It's, it's it's crazy. They they go through a lot together um, through like the prison arc and even after. Um, there's some cool cameos. Um, and it's like, doesn't it tie into all the other Inhuman stuff at the time? Um, like, aren't, don't they reference like, yeah, Black Bolt? Yeah, he's in um, wherever. The Royals was also, I think, coming out at the same time, uh, which is another Inhuman series that kind of goes through the perspective of what's happening with the royal family while Black Bolt is away in mm -hmm. prison. A lot of stuff happens to the Inhumans during that time. Isn't that when Deuce is fucking Inhuman Torch? Uh, not the torch, uh, but oh, she shit. does cheat. Was that Crystal Black and Torch? Uh, Are they it, together? It might have been. She. Crystal uh, was fucking. Medusa, Medusa <laughs> hooks up with. Uh, I think his name is Gorgon. Um, he has like. Uh, hose. Oh, the hood. Yeah, he's a. You got hose? Um, I got so I many. Got hose. <laughs> uh, but that series has got an amazing ending. Um. There's kind of a break comic in the middle that does like a weird little storytelling thing and switches up the art, and I didn't like that very much. <laughs> Stand out, disliked issue. Disliked that. <laughs> I, think, I think it was specifically issue seven. Um, did not enjoy it, but the series as a whole uh, got, I think, was absolutely amazing. My all time favorite. Uh, hooked me on Inhumans to this day. Dude, that's um, dope. still my favorite. That's dope. And Kate's comes and writes and kills your yeah. whole fam. Then Kate's from <laughs> Death of the Inhumans. Uh, <laughs> he went, fuck you, Sam. Yeah. Just not because they're my favorite, but I think that was, was actually one of his weaker series. It was only a five-parter. Um, it felt rushed at mm -hmm. the end. Um, People, but that's a, that's an accepted opinion. Yeah. There's reasons I, I think that he made that series um, to True. set up more of his cosmic stuff that he was building yeah. later in the future. I think they, are they even still that. right now gone? I think there's there's still like you you kind of spoiled the end for me a little bit with yeah. like they kind of like fuck off. Yeah, they, they, they don't just know go where into they hiding. Go. And I think that's still the case. Yep. So to this day, mm -hmm. to this day, since that uh, Death of the Inhumans was written, I don't remember when that came out, but yeah. they're still in hiding. Dude, it's because Marvel knows. Fucking CB Sablewski knows <laughs> that if fucking Black Bolt is in the, in the goddamn chessboard, he, the whole MU is fucked up. Yeah. Because they can't strong. do any events. Like, Noel, oh my god. Black Bolt would just fucking destroy his ass. <laughs> He'd be done so. Yeah. So, God to your power. Um, I understand kind of why he's missing, but my right. favorite series right there. Repeat. There we go. All right, Trevor. All right. I'm conflicted. I have two. Just say them both. Okay, first, it's kind of overpowered by Watchmen. I just, Yo. I mean, you have to give fucking like, homage Watchmen to... claws. Like, we get it. Yes. Watchmen's number one for everybody. It's like the Shakespeare <laughs> comics. It's a little unfair. Yeah. Ian's hating over Ian here. Hates... I ain't hating. I'm just, I'm not, I don't get the appeal. Have like, you ever read it? Open your eyes, man. I haven't read it. I've, like, watched the movie. I guess oh, the movie was Oh, I know. You haven't <laughs> read the comic, but you've seen the movie. I've, in general, watched or read up on some stuff about it, and I just have no interest. And Dude, just, just trying to get out. It, it is man. peak writing. It is literally peak nothing writing. better. I just have no interest in it. It's like, got a team, bro. I'm not saying it's a bad comic. I'm just saying I personally have zero interest in it. That's an L. That's an L. Zero interest You're in an L. L. You're holding an L. You're holding an L. <laughs> you know what's an L? What? That it took you two fucking years to read the series that I told you to read at the beginning. What? House of M? No. X-23, the edgy <laughs> ass series. It was pretty good, though. I actually got... I'm interested in Dakin because of that series. But oh, nice. <laughs> for, for those listening, he did a little little jolt with his eyes. All right, Trevor. <laughs> the second one I couldn't pick, it was the first like, series I really got into hard in the comics, and that's Death of the Family, a little Batman arc. Sweet. Oh, Joker's fucking savage. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know about it, but he tries to kill the entire Bat fucking family <laughs> in one place, and he cuts his face off and staples it back on. Which is adapted into the TV show Gotham. True. Uh, Scott Snyder and Capullo are god tier. So I remember the series like got a lot of 
just for that one part where he cut Dude. his face off and stapled it on because apparently they were trying to revitalize the Joker and make, like, how can we one-up everything we've done before? His face like, was at, away. His face was at the GCPD and he fucking shut off all the lights, murdered everyone and took it and then mm. stapled it back on. Yeah. He ran away without a face, came <laughs> back, got his face, and then destroyed the Bat family. Well, I mean, that is a whole new level of crazy that I don't think <laughs> I've ever heard of ever before. Boom! So, <laughs> Mic drop so, on Batman Good first. job. You got that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, All right, yeah. well, that's me. Um, I guess, slightly gonna go back to my first one. Another reason that I like Secret War is because Colossus gets a lot of highlight in uh. it, and he's <laughs> my favorite character. Yes. But, um... What's your I guess my number one is gonna be really cheesy because I'm going to say Phoenix Saga. Okay. Oh, and that's that's kind of like the Watchmen. Yeah, yeah. that's like Jack's Night Claws. <laughs> yeah, I I just can't not go with it. Uh, yeah. Just because in terms of X Men series, it is amazing. There's so it there's they they build up the whole Phoenix era, and then you got the Dark Phoenix specifically which has been failed to put into film many a time. Yes, huh. a recent failure. And the recent one was worse than the first one. <laughs> I refuse to ever watch that again. Oh, God. I still have nightmares. So. <laughs> you have vowed to not watch it with me. I have vowed to never watch it with anyone. <laughs> I don't want anyone to see me cry again. <laughs> it was that good, huh? <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> I can't even joke. It oh was but, uh, just the original Phoenix Saga. It's such a good story for character development. And it shows the bond that all the X-Men have together. Mm -hmm. There's a badass fight scene with Colossus and Guardian. And it's Yo. just ridiculous. Like, I know Chase. Yo, that I, scene. I, I, I talk <laughs> type about it. And then Chase finally read it, and he called, and he like called me right then after reading it. And it was like, nah, nah, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're right. Dude, I mean, they like fucking topple a whole building. Yeah, they're, 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 they're literally so hard. the literally guardian who is the space Superman, basically. Yeah, okay. it's I'm just sure going toe to toe with Colossus, who at the time is just this eighteen year old who can metal up, metal up, and. He's going toe-to-toe no. -to -toe with Guardian, just trading blows in this, on the, I think it's the blue side of the moon? Yeah, I think it's, but isn't it where the Shires the, stay? No, they're <laughs> on the moon. Uh, oh, okay. The Shi'ar are a no, space no, force, but, but then this is against the Shi'ar. Is this when they're doing that final fight? At yes. The end? Okay. Because right. Shi'ar basically, when the Phoenix turns into Dark Phoenix, she kind of, uh... Fucks everything. You know, her first appearance, the Dark Phoenix takes over and uh, flies off and just blows up a solar system. <laughs> <laughs> For no reason. Cool. And then just kind of flies back, and oh, Jean's here. And uh, and then basically eventually the Shi'ar figure out, piece together where they went, and show up, and they're like, Jean has to die. <laughs> right. <laughs> they the X-Men are like, nah, fam. Yeah, they're like, Jean has to die. She's got that Phoenix shit going on. Uh, so we understand that Jean's not at fault, but she's got to die. Like, it's too much. Because I think I one time looked up the most powerful... There was, like, a ranking the most powerful characters and stuff. And I've looked at a few, actually. And it always goes, like, literally God. <laughs> and then, like, the children of God. <laughs> like Galactus and shit. No, yeah, no Galactus goes beneath. <laughs> um... And it goes like the children of God, and then like Odin, and then oh, Phoenix, yeah. <laughs> and then Galactus. Oh my gosh, I mean, that's no cap. Like, no, so the Shi'ar are just terrified. And they're like, we get it, it's not Jean's fault, but that's, the Phoenix is in her right now, she needs to die. Dude, and, and the and basically Xavier, who was screwing the Shi'ar queen at the time, smashing hard. Yeah, smashing hard. I don't know how because only big person, but like he's maybe not smashing at all. <laughs> mental smash, uh. dude. He could. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, oh, I'll get you to come yeah. swim my mind. Damn, um, <laughs> that's but no fun. He basically works up a deal with them that's like, you can have your team fight my team, and whoever wins gets. 
Like if I win, I think it was like I, if I win, you, you let us go, yeah, and we're fine. Yeah, they wanted be, to kill Gene. Yeah, and uh, if you win, and no one's around to stop you, kill Gene. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, when you talk but about basically in this whole fight, Wolverine gets ducked out pretty early for some actually side stuff, mm. which. Loki, I kind of liked because I don't have anything personal with Wolverine, but he is kind of overwritten into everything just because of his popularity. For sure. It was a character who's all right, but he's kind of shoved down everyone's throat, especially at that time mm -hmm. when he was at like near in the peak of mm -hmm. his popularity. Um, so they kind of took him off to do something else. He got dropped into something else. Mm -hmm. um, so it was nice not to have the overwhelmingly Wolverine storyline he was still there mm -hmm. but the fight this big final fight allowed other characters to shine which wow. i thought was really nice and um it really just kind of showed the whole bond between what amounted to a bunch of teenagers fighting an intergalactic elite death team <laughs> and uh especially going back to this fight with colossus where it's yep. this 18 year old farm boy Pounding away at Space Superman right. in this rundown Colosseum, what amounts to, and it says literally these shockwaves of their impacts collapse the Colosseum <laughs> on top of them, and that is how the fight ends because this building is dropped on them. Right. And it kind of ends with Guardian carrying him out and was like, You were actually like, he, he's like, I saved you because. You're a valiant foe. Yeah, you were like, <laughs> he's like, I ain't never fought anyone like you in a while, bro. He had respect for him. Yeah, and oh, man. of course, Guardian is a good guy and actually didn't have any beef with anything there. Right. But then, eventually, you know, they are all picked off slowly. And uh, it kind of ends with what amounts to Scott and Jean. And um, they're backed into this cave, and Scott's like, don't worry. I got this. And uh, Gene's kind of just like, nah, this is over. And ends up ditching Scott in the cave, dropping the cave on her, and you know, sacrificing herself in general. But the X-Men kind of make this valiant last stand and kind of get back up. Like She's like ready to sacrifice herself. And they all run back in the way and just kind of stand there. And they're like, no, we're not gonna let you. <laughs> They're like, you guys have been beat, like. But it just really showed the highlight, the bond, and mm -hmm. all this backstory and character development brought it to the forefront. Right. And this great way that would is really hard to achieve, I feel like, without yeah. looking ridiculous and cheesy. And they managed to pull off just right. Well, Claremont is the king of character development. Claremont is the only writer I know, and he's the only writer I care about. <laughs> like, he could develop, like, a fucking shoe in the comic, <laughs> and you would fucking love it by the end. <laughs> um, well, is that all you got? That's all I got. <laughs> That's all? Damn. <laughs> Lots of X-Men. I don't know anything about X-Men, so... Sorry, I can't right. weigh in a lot on what you're saying, but I know I've heard of these things. I know <laughs> I've heard of those. I've probably talked about them before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, well, I'm sure you guys were all like, "Where the fuck is the Moon Knight at in my list?" <laughs> <laughs> Number one, baby. Yes, reserved. <laughs> and yeah, this spot almost has to go to Moon Knight as a character. And the the way I got into him was I literally figured out that he has no like year one just like some quick mini you can read to get the gist of the character and you essentially have to start from issue one in the 80s <laughs> and so i was like fuck all right this is a journey and so i started from issue one and read all the way through until i got hit in a continuity wall where now I, i'm picked lore up whore. so yeah lore horror town but specifically if i have to give it to a moon knight series i would give it to like the marvel knights moon knight like 2006 sam knows that series <laughs> Gothic. Yeah, the red, the bottom, violent. Oh my, oh my God! Talk about face cutting off. Violent, fucking. Oh. It's some shit. But I, but it's like Horrific. the classic Moon Knight is still amazing. Like it's, yeah. it's just Bronze Age goodness. So it's not you know gory and anything. But the bottom, dude, the bottom is great. And that the rest of that run is amazing. Yeah. Like ugh, Moon Knight is just so fucking badass. And specifically on some, we're talking about side character like 
great side character moments. Bushman slash Khonshu yeah. in that series is whew, just perfect side character Spine business. Chilling. Seriously. Creepy moments. Seriously. That is creepy. A, scary, a freaky comic to read. It he it takes Moon Knight on some highs and some lows. It's at a very the bottom plot. You're right. It and is that that shit. series kind of does give you like a, a year one catch up. You remember the profile? Yeah. Another great side character. Yeah. But he he's like, okay, so Moon Knight, here's his fucking thing. He's batshit crazy and he fucking cuts people's goddamn faces off. He, <laughs> the profile was a cool character, yeah. You know, the profile's sweet. I would love to see him in some more comics. Neat exposition tool. I mean, yeah, like that was his whole goddamn purpose. Right. <laughs> but I, it's, I love that it was like Marvel almost admit, like, we can't sum up this character. <laughs> like, just keep it fucking going. Yeah. We're just gonna just if you want to really read him go to 80s yeah but yeah so top spot is moon knight just in general let's go yeah well that gives all of our number ones i think that gives people a good gist of like what we're all into for I sure so. yeah cool. yeah and you know i, I want to have you guys all on at some point ian you'll definitely be on to talk about some x-men shit trevor That's some nice. batman shit yeah, maybe. perhaps maybe. sarn some inhuman shit absolutely <laughs> or some ghost rider shit that would be fun anytime so another fun question i figured i would ask what is one comic series you guys have read that was straight fucking ass like just wipe your fucking ass with that comic <laughs> bad like what's one thing that made you just feel like fuck this we'll throw it out uh, that's hard it is hard we can we can give you a second not a whole lot of shit has just been like super dookie I can give you one <laughs> All right, go for it. I, I'll give you one while you guys think Trevor I, I know you know one the one we always rag on. Well, I don't want to say it. Oh, I'm not going to say it. Because it's all, I always say it. Hey, you can you can be that, take that L or that dog. I ain't saying it. But my, my series specific is, another fan favorite character of mine is Iron Fist. He's just fucking dope as fuck. Uh-huh. And specifically the 2017 Iron Fist series written by Ed Bryson is so shit. <laughs> I can't fucking <laughs> believe how bad it is. And you know, it's no hate. Like I, even though I want to be critical on this podcast, I don't want to come up like I'm hating and bryson has written shit that i fuck with his recent ghost rider was yeah. really dope but that iron fist series i could not stand it like <laughs> I, I was like so grateful it was only fucking 14 issues it was trying to cap like it was it was literally trying to copy the the famous iron fist series from 2006 written by brubacher and matt fraction and brubacher brubacher and he matt fraction who writes that hawkeye series it's all fraction. connected man yeah and it, he literally was trying to copy it like point blank I've, I've talked to people about it and apparently nobody likes it so yeah what, what are y'all thinking Dude, i can't really think right now i just I got one no, all right got one. go for it uh, I know I talked hype about Secret Wars, but Secret <laughs> Wars 2 literally so fucking hate. I haven't even looked into it because... Don't look into me. it. Yeah, Do you, not look into you it. You stop me from ever being interested in that comic. <laughs> it's just the, the Beyonder who is like this basic god. The He's god. literally the most powerful character ever. Mm-hmm. Um, who started Secret Wars 1... And just pitted good against evil together, and it's just kind of this overarching figure. Mm-hmm. Then they decide for Secret Wars two, they're gonna have him come back, and uh, he's gonna try to be human. So it's like this whole discovering how to be human shit, while all the superheroes are freaking out because like, what the fuck is the Beyonder doing here? Miss me with that shit. Yeah, and then everyone just ends up trying to fight the Beyonder, and he just kind of. Like and the reason they beat him is because he's like, I'll never understand what it's like to be human unless I become actually human. So he like... What? He like transports his consciousness into this newborn baby and then they're like, alright, let's kill a baby. <laughs> and they kill a fucking baby. <laughs> like, they just kill a baby to end the Beyonder. No, I'm all here. Who did it? What the hell? Who killed the baby? I don't remember off the top of my head who did. Like an event. But it's also got uh, this uh, whole prestige. The Phoenix shows like it makes an appearance too, and she gets like gone, fucking deleted. It's just so bad, and they try to bring everyone back in, and it's like this massive fuck right. fest of characters. It makes no sense. We never know what's happening. Like it was like trying to catch lightning in a bottle. Yeah, yeah definitely. And it was just 
Eat. <laughs> it's like, why shit. the fuck did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, it sucks too to follow up like the best event ever with the worst event ever. <laughs> yeah, and I will, I will say an honorable mention was the series itself wasn't bad, but I absolutely hate the art style for New Mutants. The it looks disgusting. The, old, the first one? All of them. They all have the same art style. <laughs> well, not like all of them, but it's like the classic New Mutants art style. Yeah. Where it kind of looks like an insane child drew it. Bro, you're talking mad shit on one of the best artists right now. Ooh. Bill Sankiewicz. I don't know if I'm the artist or not. He, I know he does the um, the later arcs in that. In he, the, uh, it was also the art for the town. Yeah. Well, he created Moon Knight. So you're you're talking shit on the fam right now. <laughs> I hate that style so much. It's very eclectic. I can I can see it's sort of one of those That's, artists. I mean, the series itself isn't bad. I just hate the art style. Right. Like, <gasps> all right. That give you goons some time to think. Um. It doesn't have to be a whole run. It can just be like an issue if if you yeah. like, particularly hate one issue or something like that. Oh, uh, I can think of one in the fucking Immortal Hulk series where they a <laughs> fucking random little one shot in like the middle of the Oh series. my gosh, dude, people love that I issue. I hate that shit. That was so confusing. <laughs> it was hella confusing. They, the uh, issue 25. But I think so. Yeah. Whatever the weird, I couldn't even fucking describe it because it was so dude, confusing. It was, I, it was basically like Hulk is destroying light itself. Yes, the art yes. style was like abstract yes. as fuck. I had no clue what was going on. They used fake words the entire they, they time. They spoke in like a different language. The whole time. And I'm like, yeah. you're pissing me off, man. I can't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> that shit, I low-key liked that issue, and we've had this conversation. I, it, dude. I don't even know if I finished it. We'll have to do a whole podcast about that issue. But other than that, the fucking Catwoman, 2018 Catwoman mm. was dookie. Yeah. It's still running. Dude, I just don't know why. I think their biggest L was taking her out of Gotham. Motherfucker. Which they had to for the wedding, I guess. But that too, like the wedding. Was a why didn't they just actually have them get married? Well, there's a reason. Well, Tom, I never read the comics. So Tom King is a fucker. That's the reason. <laughs> well, Tim, you cannot be not bad. I'm low key much. salty about that just because at the same time there was Colossus and Kitty's wedding and it we also got canceled. Uh, that was we I just remember we were just like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, we were hyping our wedding up and then it ended up being a fucking flop too. We were yeah. like, well, we, no one wins. <laughs> yeah. We were both just talking bad shit on each other's weddings and then they both flopped and were like, wow, this is pain. Dude, I, I would love if Tinny and actually like married them officially fucking come on man that, that would be tight that would be a good some... follow up I just hate the whole roundabout oh uh, bullshit with, like just telling you if I get married and... well I don't even remember the shit with Catwoman it was something like Bane was controlling like her maybe or some shit because at, at the end of the like, issue like... they had the, all the villains talking to Bane and he was like yeah it was like thank, thank you or something I don't know that was because that was the build up to City of Bane. Yeah. Well, that's a better reason than Kitty had. She just kind of fucking was like, I don't like, want the altar bounced. Like, that's as nice. he's putting the ring on, phases and's like, I can't do this, and just whoop, down to the ground and out. Wow. And everyone's like, the fuck just happened? Like, like Kitty, you bitch. Yeah. And that was, she was just like, there was too much history and damage, you know? I'm like, then why the fuck you get that far? Yeah. Right. But then I low key, they kind of made it better, because then. Gambit and Rogue got married, and Gambit is also like my second favorite character. Right. So I was like, you know what? It's okay. You know okay. what? That's true. And they, that was a couple that needed to get fucking married. True. Right. Though if you want to talk about fucking damage, there's way more there than Kitty and Colossus <laughs> ever fucking had. That's a fact. <laughs> Alright, Barnyold. You got something. Um, I was actually struggling with this question. Um, hey, that's good. That's a good problem to have. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Your KD ratio is pretty high. Yeah. I, I haven't been reading comics for a long time, so I haven't been exposed to a lot of bad comics, I would say. I can usually find something to be happy about when I walk away from it. That's a good quality to have as well. Yeah. Um, Excuse me? What class? What I'm going to say <laughs> is the 2018 Domino series Ooh. by Gail Simone. Bro, you got me to read that shit. I, it started out so good. I, I mean, it spent money on your, on your recommendation. No, it was you good. Talk? You only talked about, about it good. so yes. much. It started out very good. That's one of my only like mutant I characters you I know read about. That Domino. First comic too. I oh, probably no. did. I loved how it started. It ended. Wait, the s ending uh, of the series totally derailed. It was a totally like, went so. It, yeah, it went for sure. I, I was so confused. It led into Hot Shots, 
Domino's oh, team yeah. where she got all the girls together. Black Widow. That like cowgirl. Cowgirl. Uh, Diamond. I had some, Diamond, Diamond Bag. Bag. Yeah, that's right. Um, she got like the whole squad together, and that series started out pretty okay. This Wakandan new Wakandan girl oh, character. Shiri. No, not no. Shuri. I don't remember her name, um, but. The, the, the series, series to the Blackwood Row Row Row. Black Panther movie probably. Not Storm, it, but her name. Uh, I don't think man. she was in it either. She was a brand new character. Uh, well, I think it was a character that probably made. Maybe. Due um, to the success of Black Panther movie. Probably. Wakanda was big that year. Wakanda yeah. forever. Um. Got a lot of hype. The, and then the ending of Hot Shots, I just thought got way too insane. Yeah. Uh, she it ended had to up do being with, like, a celestial shit. Yeah, right? she, Domino got imbued with the power of a celestial and just was like shooting like millions of megatons of energy <laughs> out of her guns, and it was just like just too crazy for a character whose power is like good luck. luck. Yeah, good <laughs> luck. And it was so it was like amplified good luck with celestial power. It just this GG. It got insane. GG. Really insane. Wow. Um, I feel fucking, like. Especially when it comes to space and magical stuff, when that gets thrown into series that know. don't usually have it. Yeah. Like, that's some, those are whole little, they're all niches in this, in the comic world that you have to understand fairly well before any of them. Yeah. Right. Sense. And it, it almost shows, like, a little bit of a lack of ideas for the run when you're like, mm, okay, let's just um, do something with Galactus, I guess. We'll just uh, throw him in or whatever. Yeah. We'll just pull a typical right. ass. Right. But this, Famous character out of your ass. Yeah, yeah right. some cameos. Well, doesn't that doesn't that Domino series end with some vampire shit? It does have. I don't know if it Another ends piece. with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It brings Morbius into it. Right. Oh, and that I guess that was something I thought was cool about that series is because it kind of it was like a precursor to I think this Dracula vampire mm -hmm. stuff that I think is still even building now, isn't it? Oh, shit. In isn't Avengers. It Omega Red, like with Dracula or something. You were talking yeah. about that in your podcast. That's, that's now on the Wolverine yes. series. When I heard you say that, I was yeah, like, bro. they started this stuff yeah. in this Domino series. I'm waiting for them to reference Sh the, yes. the Chernobyl shit. Yes. Uh, there has like been some, some Dracula vampire shit brewing oh, yeah. for real. Some, uh, really weird ass crossovers with Dracula oh, and yeah. like mutant related characters. Uh -huh. Something's like, gonna happen. Right now he's with Omega Red. Yeah. yeah. Like what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and Jubilee he became a vampire for a while that for was some random. fucking reason. <laughs> and just. Well, Dracula makes a weird appearance. Yeah, <laughs> Dracula, you're right. just like, what the fuck? He's like one it's of like, Marvel's oldest characters, technically. Yeah. And you just, it's, everyone forgets he exists. Yeah. <laughs> Which until is he so pops random. up and shit, and you're like, oh, oh yeah. So random. Dracula? I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> so Wait, Dracula's <laughs> in Marvel? Everyone in life, like, yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah. like Hercules. Or like, or like Frankenstein. Like motherfucker, He's in DZ. <laughs> He's awesome. <laughs> the good Hercules is like an OG, like, mm -hmm. Avenger, too. Yeah. yeah. On a fun fact shit, he was the first ever Marvel character to get a limited series. Really? Yeah, like before limited. Wolverine, actually. Who? Well, her kids. Wolverine didn't actually get his till fairly late. In like the, I think it was like AD, like a year, 1980. But yeah, Hercules he's got it a little bit before that. AD. So he, he holds that crown. I'm kind of yeah. surprised that uh, Wolverine didn't get his series earlier. Honestly. I mean, he got his the second one, so. He was very popular. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Well, if you want a little context on this vampire stuff we're talking about, I think it's in Aaron's Avengers. Yep. There's an arc. That a goes, great arc. Yeah, very good arc. Goes really heavy into this vampire stuff. Yeah. I think it catch you up. Aaron does Aaron does it really easily. well. Yeah. Right. Super cool series. I want more of that shit because it, it came in way yeah. so randomly. Yeah. Hopefully it's, it's in that Wolverine. Yeah. I that think it's building for something for sure. Right. So, last question, just in general, what is on the horizon for y'all in comics? Like, what, what's down the pipeline? What's going on? Sam, I know you have, you were pissed that <laughs> I probably asked this question. <laughs> but hey, be honest, just be, be real with them. Um, I mean, I, I haven't been reading comics recently uh, mm -hmm. for a long time, I guess. is recent really isn't the best word. I've kind of fallen off of the hobby, but um, I still really enjoy talking about yeah. the comics, stuff I've read, stuff that's still going on. Um, and when you you have a bunch unread. Yes, I have a I have a collection of comics unread that I need to get back on the right. horse and. So one, one day you'll probably do yeah. it, and maybe maybe this pod will kind of give you a reason to. I think so. I would yeah. love 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 to talk about that uh, Marvel Knights Inhumans. Absolutely, that would be so fun. It's a great series. I started it, did not finish it, dude. And I would reread that shit. Yeah. It is fire. I uh, I think that. 
this might prompt me to get a little bit more Dude, engaged. That would be lit. And yeah. Hey, we could do your fave series, your third <laughs> fave series. Hell, we could do the Black Bolt series. Yeah. That's the thing. I want to do like run reviews and shit, okay. arc reviews. Yeah. So have bonus shit. But gotcha. Trevor. Uh, it's a little easier for you to answer, right? I mean, I'm buying weekly shit all the right. time. Right, that's what me and Trevor are on. King and Black coming up. Whew, uh, that's how what, what about, like, your your backlog reading? Well, I'm trying to get to fucking Original Sin so I can read Lady Thor. The second, True. The second Thor series in Aaron's run. I thought you were going to talk about the Before Watchmen, because you've been reading that lately. I'm reading that because I got fucking, what's the other thing? Doomsday Clock. Yep. I got a first trade I want to read. So you're building up to that low key. Yeah, I'm, I'm lore horror a little. Hey man, that's the way. Leave no details unknown. <laughs> Very good things I've heard about that Thor. Unworthy oh, Thor is, is what it's, it's where called. It's where it's Lady Thor yeah, or yeah. Jane Foster. But I got to read a bunch of fucking events to get to Original Sin to get to that. Boom. Yeah. Domino. All right, that's how it would be. I feel your pain. I think it's all right. Though. What X Men show you better be reading? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know me so well. Um, Let me take a guess. Does it begin with the letter X? <laughs> I don't think so. I feel kind of attacked right now. <laughs> I feel fully attacked. We're attacked. I'm gonna start screaming beauty at me. <laughs> but I guess, like I said before, I kind of fell off of comics for. Mm-hmm. I guess it's been maybe like. You were, months you were the first of us all now. to fall off. I was the first of us all and I was the first to fall off. Um, man, was disheartening. You were quite literally, you said fuck comics at one point. Yeah, man. You felt I think I probably well. said that just to fuck with y'all. You felt But I mean, well. it was kind of with my job at the time <laughs> and stuff. Personally, I was working like 60 hours a week. Mm-hmm. And just like it's hard to have time. stuff going on, yeah. For sure. But it's hard to find time to buy the comics when you're supposed to read them. Right. But that's what's great. Like, yeah. I just started getting this pile stacked up, and I'm like, I'm never gonna catch up. All right. Did you read them and at so, least? Huh? You read them at least? Yeah, I have now. Let's go, baby. Because I mean, I guess recently I had a personal tragedy, mm-hmm. and Life I kind of was like, I went, felt like reading comics the nice. day after and the day of. So I just kind of spent all day reading comics, and ooh, ooh, ooh. they can be therapeutic ooh. for a while. Up to Dawn of X. Mm. And I don't know. I've kind of gotten back into it a little bit. I had. Trevor had actually convinced me to read Hawk's Pox Hawk's before. Hawk's. Great event. Hawk, Hawk. It, Which... it was a good event, so I kind of I skimmed over it again and refreshed my memory. Let's go. And uh, I wasn't so super far behind, honestly. It was no. only like 20 or 30 comics. Yeah. Um, from where I had left off in the current era. Well, now you're reading all the Dawn of X. Yeah, so I'm gonna probably start reading Dawn of X and then pick up where I left off in the 90s and finally maybe finish. Once I get through the 90s and I'm the early 2000s, I have mm. to fucking plan that whole weird fuckfest route that they have going on For there. Sure. For sure. Um, but then after I finish all of X Men and get caught up, I don't think I'll ever go back to buying. The physical copies like you guys are. Never say never, bro. I said I don't think. I <laughs> never, never said never. Never, never say, say I don't, don't think. think. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, I'll just probably try to keep up as much as I can on the app. And mm. uh, just pay for complications. If y'all want me to read ahead for a specific series to talk about it, then you, you can bring your comics over and I'll fucking read them. Because uh, you'll only be like a maximum of like six ahead hey. of me, so. You know, may- maybe maybe we could work something out. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I'll just read all of the Dawn of X series, and, <laughs> except for that Fallen Angels series that I took one look at and was like, fuck yeah. no. I, I kind of wanted to get it because it had X23, but I didn't. Reluctant. It, it was literally not just kind of looked like edgy. I'm surprised you didn't. It looked like edgy characters. Just a whole cast of edgy outsider characters, which is yeah. like. Your fucking masturbation material. It is my masturbation material. <laughs> Seriously, you jerk off of those comics. Absolutely. <laughs> That's something you want to share with the class? Um, let's change the subject here. <laughs> no, yeah, I do want to get you on as you read X Men shit, and it'd be fun to even go talk about like your uh, Dark Phoenix arc. It'd be kind of fun to talk about Inhumans versus X Men with Samuel. That, that would be a there. fun combo. I mean, okay, but we couldn't have that without the you both of you reading the event. I have deep, deep beef. Deep beef. <laughs> Deep beef. <laughs> um, well, yeah, and as far as mine goes, I'm in Trevor's boat where I read them weekly. And read everything more than me. I'm trying. I'm I'm 
been compared to the fucking grand librarian of comics. Well, you are, I, have best, I have bestowed upon you before I quit the comic god title. Barnes hey, Nobles. I wear comics. it with pride. <laughs> but, like, backlog shit. I'm reading through Marvel at the moment. Um, like, the whole big publisher. Yeah. <laughs> also, I you know well, comics. Well, starting from the yeah. first OG Human Tour series. Well, Marvel Comics 1. Yeah, Marvel Comics 1. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm actually just reading through the Marvel Knights publishing era, which is like early 2000s shit. And then I'm going to get like running again with uh, Secret Invasion and start getting back into events and shit. And then I can start to read some of those comics on my desk because they're all tied up in continuity that I can't read. Um, and then DC, like I'm reading Batman at the moment. I have like I think Batman R.I.P. just sitting around collecting dust. Um, yeah, and R.I.P. R.I.P. Batman. I'm reading through the whole publishing line of Valiant right now, which has been fun. Chase, like you know literature. Yeah, I'm yep. gonna read that. <laughs> well, funny enough, the uh, only thing I haven't tried to dip into a ton has been Image. I read image comics here and there, but, you know, like, I'm surprised I haven't been like, yeah, I'm reading Spawn now, and shit like that. I read the longest writing comics. How much Dark Horse have you read? I've read a couple Dark Horse things here and there. That's one of those publishers that doesn't have, like, a slew of ongoing series, other than Hellboy, which I have the first Hellboy trade, (laughs) so. (laughs) Yeah. I don't remember, did did the Dark Horse series, like, all interconnect, technically, like, like, the other universes, or are they all more single? It's actually all more single-like. That's I thought. Yeah, I, I think Hellboy is the only one to ever have spinoffs with like BPRD and shit like that. I thought they were all kind of like somehow connected, but not really in the same way that Marvel and DC are. Well, I know Valiant is a shared universe. Um, Image does some connections here and there, but I don't know about Dark Horse. Maybe. <laughs> I guess unless y'all have final thoughts. Comics rule. Oh yeah, Comics fuck rule. Batman. Girls drool. <laughs> X-Men sucks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the running beef. Instead of Inhumans vs. X-Men, Batman, Batman vs. <laughs> X-Men. <laughs> Batman, X-Men are dirty muties. Damn, all right, Damn, all right. hold on. <laughs> That's all. That's all. Well, yeah, I hope I hope you guys, I hope this isn't the last time you guys are here in the stew for New Age Comics. <laughs> I hope the building doesn't get blown up. Well, boy, I hope that doesn't happen. Oh, boy. Just hope it. If you want to go there. Is that a threat or a... Keep your damn self. Fuck Batman. <laughs>